Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzela Kay, and this video is just a short summary of the Eliza Fletcher case, full autopsy report. We had read it all together in a live stream earlier, but I feel like a summary is much more appropriate. And while I usually love to read documents from the top to the bottom, those are usually legal documents and that kind of makes sense. But autopsies can be really graphic. And the last thing I ever want to do is to feel like, you know, in any way, I'm stripping a victim of their dignity or anything like that, or even getting those kind of conversations going. You know, it just felt like, whoa, that autopsy was, it was pretty rough. And so I thought I'd rather just um, offer you a summary of what we learned there. And the important thing that we learned is Eliza's manner of death, which Cleotha Abstin, and also if you do not know anything about this case, I have linked the playlist for you in the description box. Eliza Fletcher went for a jog at four o'clock in the morning in Memphis, Tennessee on September 2nd. And she was abducted at 4.20 a.m. And Cleotha Abstin who had just been released from prison and spent a long time in prison for kidnapping someone before. You know, he'd been out for, um, I believe it was just over a year or so. i got to check my own video for all that. I'm just doing a quick recap. Oh, man. He had um, been kind of staking out the area for 25 minutes. And then as she was jogging past, got out the vehicle, stormed towards her. She fought for her life. He got her into the vehicle and then no one ever saw her again. Her body was found on September 5th, 2022, not far from his brother's house, where he was actually seen on September 2nd, before 8 o'clock in the morning, cleaning the car and washing his clothes in the sink and all of that. So the neighbors were like, that was weird. And as the police were searching for Eliza, we saw lots of activity, including them, uh, transporting an entire dumpster away. So that was scary as well. On September 5th, Eliza was found behind an abandoned house, as I say, not far from where his brother lived. And he was arrested. He had already other charges already pending. And so he might be facing capital punishment now that he's back in jail and will be on trial again for this murder charge amongst other charges. So that's that uh, quick recap. Now, the way that he attacked her and killed her is terrible. It's just, it's so horrible to think about because she was just training for a marathon, going on a, on a jog early in the morning, healthy. I mean, the autopsy revealed that she had had a very healthy breakfast. There were some peanuts and berries and um, oats and greens um, in her stomach but he had um, shot her at the back of her head on the right hand side lower to the like base of her skull and the bullet head of course entered through the front there was also um, blunt force trauma to her head which sounded absolutely brutal really horrible and there there were some more details of course there was also SA that's what they revealed initially and it's just really horrendous to think about it's a completely senseless crime and it's scary to think about and so to those of you who were part of the live stream and were there with me through the full autopsy Damn. Well, thank you for being there. I've uh, I'd rather put that video to rest because it's just too much. <laughs> to me, it just feels, it felt afterwards like that was just too much. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced um, like trauma triggers, but physical ones. Like a physical, you physically feel triggered as if you're traumatized. And for me, my core begins to like um, shake, like flutter, but like in the pit of my stomach. And I feel traumatized and triggered and I'm trying to figure out why, but I think it was just, it was all just too much for me. And if it's too much for me, 
I know it's going to be too much for many of you. And, you know, this community is not about super graphic details. And even though we have our trigger bunny, which some people laugh at and some people love, we showed the trigger bunny. And when we were done, we said, okay, now you can listen again. But, you know, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because the details are horrendous. You know, so I'm not, I, I don't work in a, in a morgue or I'm not a forensic pathologist or anything. So to go to that level, sometimes it's, it's a little bit too far, I think, especially when it's a victim of crime. I remember when I was covering Naomi Irion's case and we got more information about what happened to her. Um, I'd spoken to her family and I'd also seen, you know, what they put out on social media of like, please don't see her any differently. And today I just got reminded of that. I just remembered how they were like, please don't, don't let anyone see her differently, you know? And I'm like, I understand because you don't want people to remember a person by that last new information or what happened to them that was so horrendous or to have those graphic things playing over and over again in your mind. So while this is a true crime channel in general, it's a very sensitive true crime channel. So I apologize if it made anyone uncomfortable in this community when I read the full report. Um, I don't think I'll do it again. So you know how in Kylie Rodney's case, it's like, oh, when are we going to get the full autopsy? It's like everyone's, you know, eager to see the autopsy and tox reports. Like I'd, I will not be reading that out loud, the whole thing. I will definitely... We'll look at what's important and summarize it. I'll do that. Um, but yeah, this is my channel is not the place to for us to be graphic. It's just not how I roll. It doesn't make me feel comfortable. And, you know, in that light, I also do want to say I was thinking of um, making a video where I can talk about the Netflix series on Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm still thinking about it. But I must say that also takes me straight back to a very like graphic, grim mental space because, yeah, if you know anything about his case, it is like that. And while I'm very excited to have been interviewed by The Sun about my book and all of that, I just remember what it felt like to be in that headspace, you know, studying him for for months and just kind of getting in his head and just thinking about everything he'd done, it's just, you know, never mind thinking of getting in all the victim's shoes and just, it's horrendous. So the Netflix series, I think, did a really good job of portraying Dahmer exactly as the monster that he was and not a sexy serial killer as sometimes Netflix likes to make them out to be. Like <laughs> when Zac Efron was Ted Bundy and things like that, you know. I think that was a little bit of a, of a boundary cross, you know. I just think that since um, re-watching the Dahmer stuff, you know, watching it on Netflix and really thinking about it all again, it's kind of put me in a little bit of like a like a triggered and, and morbid headspace, you know. And I just, I just think that we've all had a rough week. I mean, um, we saw Kylie Rodney's death certificate. And um, I've been busy talking about Dharma all week, especially with the interviews that I've had. And now we looked at Eliza Fletcher's autopsy. And in between, I've also looked at Christian Glass's autopsy. We looked at the Sean Doherty case. Oh, man, there's been so many cases that have actually been so grim that I need to get out a little bit in nature. Don't worry. I don't ever go away for long. I go away for like a day. I'm not going away. <laughs> I'll be here. It's just, I just know that if I feel like, whoa, that was, that was a heavy week, then I know that many of you are going to feel that way. So I hope that you're okay. I hope that you're looking after yourself. I mean, winter is also setting in, in the Northern Hemisphere. I mean, in South Africa, where I'm from, it's like spring now. <laughs> so I just know that when winter sets in and gets all cold, people can also get seasonal depression and things like that. So so just take care of yourselves, okay? If you ever need to take a step back, whatever, that makes sense. Look after yourself. Um, but yeah, I'll be continuing to cover cases as always. I've just, uh, I've learned a little something. 
this week of like, hmm, some things, even though I know we like, we want to know, but some things I'm just rather going to summarize. That's what I'm going to do in the future. So thank you so much for listening to me for 10 minutes of this. What I want to show you now is what I showed you earlier in the stream. If you were there, I want to show you this channel, which is called um, Big Bake on the Move. So I'm going to put it on here. All right, let me take myself out the way. <laughs> so if I move myself here. Um, we have Big Bake on the Move. Thank you to all the Grizzlies who have already subscribed. The reason I want to show you his channel is because um, he has, this video is called Eliza Fletcher, Memphis Billionaire Abducted, Crime Scene, Grave and Real Life Locations. Now, please go and watch this video on his channel so that you can support him, the content creator. He has given me permission to share this with you as he did earlier. Um, and we are often in contact and I think he does some great work. Boots on the ground, with total respect uh, for the victims and their families. So go and check it out, Big Bake on the Move. I'll make sure that it's in the description box as well as in the pinned comments. But I wanted to show you um, Eliza's final resting place because it's a very beautiful um, cemetery. Uh, specifically, we're at Polk Cemetery. Uh, this was about an hour drive from Memphis, so it gave me a lot of time to reflect on this and think about it. And I actually didn't cut the radio on or anything. And I really didn't notice that till I got here the whole time. I was just thinking about this case and, and all the stuff and just an absolutely senseless, senseless crime. You know, there was uh, nothing gained from this. Families uh, heartbroken, daughters been lost, siblings been lost, mother, wife, beautiful lady, had a beautiful future ahead of her. Gonna do some amazing things, I'm sure. But she is laid to rest in an absolutely gorgeous little cemetery. And uh, when you come in the gates, she's buried right there on the right. You can't miss it. And um, she's buried right near her, uh, her grandfather there. I'm going to show you all that in just a second. But before we get over to that, uh, I want to thank all y'all for coming and watching my channel. Uh, I really appreciate the support. It helps me out a lot. While y'all are here, if y'all don't mind, hit the like button. Go ahead and share it on your social media. A lot of people love true crime. They'd love to see this, and that's your way. I never ask for money or anything. I never ask for anything at all, donations. Uh, that's y'all's way of being able to help me. It's real simple. It's free. This, this channel's free to everybody. So uh, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Prayers go out to this family and uh, Eliza's everlasting soul. You know, there's not enough you can say about this. Uh, my heart breaks for those kids and uh, just the family in general, but those kids especially. The loss, the hole, the void, it's gotta be gone, I can't imagine. I was at that house today, there were toys and stuff laying around on the front porch, and man, it just, even talking about it now, man, I have to be careful, I'll get to cracking up on here, and I ain't trying to do that right now, so. Anyways, we're gonna wrap it up. Prayers to the family, prayers to Eliza's everlasting soul. Um, what else can I say? I say that every time, but that's just, that's it. I'm just going to spin the camera around. We're going to walk over. I'm going to show you the grave and the video will end right there. Once again, thank y'all for the support. We'll see y'all in the next one.
so thank you for watching that with me beautiful flowers um at her gravesite um she's right there with her grandfather so if you want to see more footage like that uh, you can go to big bake on the move and i wanted to just wrap up with what i was saying about the dharma stuff because i'm not sure i did i'm not sure i'm not sure that i'm going to make a video on it you know I can see there's lots of videos being made on it, but if you want to know all the facts about the Dharma case, I do have a book available, ebooks, paperbacks, and audiobooks. I've already spent months of my life in that space. Why go in it again? You know what I mean? I've already offered my information and thoughts and things like in that book. So, I mean, it is very... <laughs> manual style so it's like you know bullet points presentation style writing it's not so much storytelling it's much like me in my channel a lot over here is like presentations bullet points and <laughs> looking at things as it happens rather than the storytelling but uh yeah if you want all the facts it's right there in the book so i would encourage you to go check that out instead you know I don't know if I want to talk about Dharma right now again. Maybe at some point, and as I've said on Patreon before to the patrons, maybe over there um, I could share some more like um, articles or things. I could like do a bit of write-ups and things about just some thoughts on the episodes and uh, what they could have added or, you know, where they just showed things that weren't quite correct or things like that, just to explain maybe. Um, I could do that. I might do that. Just do a few write-ups because that's easy to manage. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you so much <laughs> for listening to me today and for seeing me for the third time today. If you were there for the live stream and then you watched the clip and now you're here again. Damn. You're a committed grizzly. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys very soon again. Um, don't worry about me. I'm okay. I just hope that you're okay and that it wasn't too much for a large percentage of my audience. Okay, stay safe, stay snarky, and I will see you in the next one.